Dang. Right here, just in case. The wacko said the head was it's okay. Hi everybody, this is Dr. Wardwell at All Pet Complex. Uh, today we are placing a esophagostomy tube on a cat. This is actually a uh, one of our staff member's cats. And he has a presumptive diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease. He's, and if that's the case, he, it's fairly severe. He's losing a lot of weight and uh, he's borderline hypoalbuminemic and uh, won't readily eat our preferred diet. So we're going to go ahead and place an E-tube on him to support him while we start some other treatments. Just getting a couple of things ready here. So we're going to place a 20 French uh, red rubber catheter. This is a nice big tube. Um, it's a nice big tube, so very unlikely to get clogged. Um, and I've measured it from the kind of proposed side of our stoma to about the in ninth or tenth intercostal space. So right now it's in it here. It's 12, 11, 10. So yeah, that, so the goal is to not necessarily put it in the stomach unless we have some indication to put it in the stomach, which we don't. Um, you know, it's not regurgitating or anything. So we'll place that uh, in the esophagus. And anything else? And I've cut the end off of the tube. I don't like to leave the little blunt end. This is less likely to get um, clogged. Anything else I need right away? That should be it. So you can place this on either side. Most people will put it on the left because the esophagus is on the left, but you can really technically place it on either side. I'm gonna put a little lube on these caramels because and it often slides into the esophagus a little easier that way. And so we want to place it kind of ventral to the wing of the atlas, which is right here, um, above the carotid and jugular, dorsal to those structures, which are right here. Um, and then somewhere kind of halfway between the kind of back of the jaw, the, the angle of the jaw and the thoracic inlet. So we'll probably end up doing it you know, right about here. So we'll place the caramel into the mouth. And we do this anesthetized both because you'll want them to not feel stuff, but also um, if, we're, if we do it fully anesthetized and intubated, then it's really hard to put it in the wrong tube. And so I'll place it in and then kind of tint this up check my landmarks. So here's the wing of the atlas again. If you tint it up really high, you should be able to see whether there's a jugular in the, in the way, but you can place it down below the level of the jugular and then see it slip off there. So that was probably a jugular and carotid slipping off of the caramel. So I know I'm between those. I'll paint our stuff again. That's kind of right where we want to be. So we'll take a blade and we're going to just nick right over that car malt. I'll start by just pressing straight down because the skin's going to slide around. There we go. And then if you open your car malts a little bit, you can kind of cut right between the tips of them. Helps a little bit. So little and slipping around, so I'm trying not to move too far off of my target here. Because it can be hard to find the same hole again if we fall out of it. No, 
know, this is fine. It can just be surprisingly tricky to get through sometimes without sliding stuff all around and then finding out you ended up way off of the side that you wanted. Okay, so we should be just about able to pop through here. There, so we can see the tip of our car malt now. We've got just a little more tissue in the way there. Golly, Katie. He's so stretchy and floppy, it's hard to get tension on the tissues here. What you could do is kind of push down on either side of that so that you get some tension on the tissue. Awesome. And you can try and pull it down even tighter. Than that. God, am I using the right side of the blade? There we go. There we go. A little membrane of tissue over this, but now we're very easily able to cut through that. Golly, that was a tough one. Okay. still have tissue over those. How are we doing? There we go. Man. Okay. Now we're finally in. We can grasp this. get a pretty good hold on it. Very irritating if it gets away from you. As I try and pull it through the stoma here. Come on you. There we go. Go a bit a little bit too soon. Oh, thank you. Okay. Stoma's pretty tight there. Okay. So once it's through, we're going to take it and turn it around on itself. I'm doing it outside the mouth so you can see. Turn it around on itself and push it back down into the esophagus to point it the other direction. And grasping it with a forceps helps to do that. And actually lubricating it helps a lot too. Yeah, just one board of tele for a shepherd mix, and then a board of tele next to me to do an ultramont. So I'll grab the board of tele. Oh, I can't let you have a new kit. This looks 
started dropping. I was like, Okay. Our anesthetist is the kitty's mom, so <laughs> monitoring him very closely as she should. And then as you're passing it down, pulling it out a little bit to kind of relieve the kink helps. So you feel it kind of flip and slip, and I can feel it down here now. And then we can advance it. Maybe. All right, and then we need to check placement. We have a laryngoscope right over here. Thank you. Just to make sure we didn't end up going sub-Q with it or something. So there's Brachia. see it going anywhere else so we should be good there now we'll suture it into place if my fingers decide to work. Come on, Lord, well. Oh. Okay, I think I, my brain forgot how to work here. And good Lord. <laughs> You'd think I'd never done a hand tie before. All right, we'll go backwards and start this way. <laughs> Maybe my brain will be happier with that. Good gravy. Okay. So now we've secured it to the skin. Now we're just gonna do finger trap to pull this needle off so we don't actually accidentally flick him in the eye with it or something. Oh, that's gonna frustrate me actually. I wanted that needle. Oh well.
Okay, that should be pretty good. And then I meant to leave myself enough. Can you grab me another pack of like three out nylon yeah. or some other such something yeah. over there? Thank you. I meant to leave myself something to tack it up here and Honestly, forgot. I'm gonna get a board color and name it Slinky. Slinky? Slinky. 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 Slink around, you know. I was like, I have a wiener dog named Slinky. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Brandon, if you're looking for uh, Dr. Stoner, I have a room five. You found him in room five? No, I put him in room five. Oh. Okay, well, there we go. We'll put a little wrap on this. It's the nice thing about an esophageal feeding tube, you can use it right away. Uh, you don't have to wait for like a stoma to form like a G tube or something. You can uh, feed just about anything through it, especially if you make it nice and big like this. And uh, they generally tolerate them really well. You can leave it in a super long time. You can uh, pull it out without any sedation, anesthesia, anything. You just pull it out and it will granulate in. You gotta do like literally nothing to it. And uh, yeah, you can, they can eat with it in. Most patients don't seem to mind it at all. So it's a really good way to guarantee enteral nutrition and any animal that needs some help. Hepatic lipidosis and renal failure and pancreatitis, and you name it. So be careful when you're, if you're gonna put a neck wrap on, try not to strangle them. It's contraindicated in most cases. I don't think Kara would be happy if I did that to her cat. I'm not even putting much stretch on this at all, really any. Just kind of using it to cover up the other stuff so it doesn't become a mess. There you go. And then you can cap it with a Christmas tree or if they make special little caps for them or you can just use the uh, lid from a syringe, which is what I usually do. So There you go. That's an E-tube on a kitty. All right, you can wake them up. Thanks everybody for watching. Let us know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Thanks.